Ideogram 3.0 was just released and it has some amazing new features. So in this video, I wanna walk you through some of the coolest things you can do with Ideogram 3.0. So let's dive in. So I'm gonna share my screen here. Let's take a look at the official announcement from Ideogram. So I put this out just a couple days ago. It says Ideogram 3.0, meet Ideogram 3.0, stunning realism, creative designs, and consistent styles, all in one powerful model, now available to all users on Ideogram AI and in the iOS app. So new version of Ideogram, they have this video here. You can go check this out on their website, kind of gives you some examples. If you're not familiar with Ideogram, it's one of my favorite AI softwares and it really excels in creating stylized text. I think that's probably the, the best thing that it does. And it's, so it works really well for print on demand sellers, t-shirt sellers, all that kind of stuff. And that's why I love it. I think it's really, really great. Um, so in this release of 3.0, they are expanding on that and they talk in here about making some of the text, stylized text generation even better. But let's take a look at some of the things that they say about it and then we'll kind of do some demonstration. So you can see here, um, they talk about pushing the boundaries of generative media through significant advancements, uh, yada, yada. So it says, Ideogram 3.0 consistently outperforms other text image models, scoring highest in ELO rating over a set of diverse prompts. So it shows kind of a table there, supposedly the best. This is what I really want to get into. So consistent styles. Ideogram 3.0 introduces style references. Creators can upload up to three reference styles to control generations. Uh, and follow their preferred aesthetic. So you can kind of see here that you essentially upload a image. You can see like this image right here. And then it created this bowling alley. It created the Cadillac diner. It created the tree house. So you can see it's kind of in that similar style. They have other examples here. So this picture turned into this, 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 right? Uh, and you can see that, that one's really cool. So we're gonna do something similar here to kind of test that out. Cause obviously this is the, uh, the ideogram showing us, you know, the best stuff. It also says creative design. So it says Ideogram 3.0 offers game-changing text and layout generation capabilities for graphic design, advertising, marketing, and other professional use cases. Stylize accurate text. So if you look here, you know, these are book covers, it's uh, ads, social media content, and it's really touting how it can uh, create these things in the layouts uh, even better with 3.0 for kind of advertising and these kind of things. And also, you know, if you take a look at like this one right here, I mean, the amount of text that's in this image is pretty impressive, right? Same thing here. And it can interpret that text really accurately. And so we're going to do kind of a complex prompt uh, in, in the demonstration here in just a moment. Brand graphics, not going to spend too much time there, but I am going to stop here. Stunning realism. So it says, Ideogram 3.0 brings a new level of realism that blurs the line between generated and real imagery. So it's touting that 3.0 super realistic. So we're going to we're going to test that on mockups. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to share my screen with Ideogram 3.0 and we're going to do a couple different things here. So first of all, I'm going to do two examples of uploading a style reference and we'll just put in a very simple prompt to see if it really holds up uh, to actually creating a similar style. Then I'm gonna do a realistic t-shirt mock-up. Obviously most people watching this channel, you're in t-shirts, apparel, print on demand, those kind of things. So we're gonna do like a realistic mock-up and see if maybe it's a little bit more realistic than what we've got in the past or what we've seen from other uh, image generators. So we'll put in a uh, mock-up prompt. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a t-shirt design prompt. And I've, I specifically have a prompt in the books and reading niche that has a lot of text on it. So we're gonna see if it can interpret that text. So here's my screen uh, looking at Ideogram 3.0 and they've changed it very, very minimally. They haven't changed a lot here as far as like the look. You have the, I'm actually gonna ref refresh this. You have the uh, community pictures here. You can kind of look through. They did recently, I think this was, uh, not super recently, they added this t-shirt filter here, which is really cool because I love going to the t-shirt section and kind of looking at what people are creating with t-shirts, but that's there. This section up here has changed a little bit. So a lot of the similar features you saw before, but it's the, the user interface is just a little bit different. You're going to see your models right here. Uh, you can pick which model you want to use. They just came out with 2A. Like it feels like that was like just a couple days ago and now we're already on to 3.0. But you can see they do have a couple different like things here. So 
3.0 is their most advanced model. I think that's going to be the best for most things. But 2A is actually going to have faster creation time. And I believe it will take up a little bit less of your credits, right? So if you want to get more done, 2A is really good. And then 1.0 is still in there. I don't, I don't think at this point that you'd want to use 1.0. But uh, two, yeah, 3.02a, you might want to uh, kind of go back and forth between those. Then you have magic prompt. We're just going to leave that on. Here's kind of the new one, style. So if we click on that, we have the styles here that we had before, right? We have auto, random, general, realistic, and design. So we have those styles there. But now we have this new reference area and style code area. So it says style code lets you enter the eight character code from any random generated image to reuse its style. Interesting. What we're going to focus on is this reference point here where we can actually upload an image right in there and then use that. And then we also have color just like we did before where you can pick color palettes. Uh, if you're on the plus plan, I believe it is, you can do a custom color palette. And it also, I also do want to note that the style reference right here is also, you have to be on the plus plan uh, to be able to get that style reference. So here's what we're going to do for the first one. We're going to hit this reference button. And the first one, I'm actually going to upload a picture of The Simpsons. I don't know why. When I, when I always think about just unique styles, I always think of The Simpsons. So let me show you that picture just so you can kind of see that a little bit bigger. I'll open it up on my screen here. Here's the picture of The Simpsons, right? They're in the living, living room. Pretty, pretty simple picture of The Simpsons. So we upload that as a style reference. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a super simple prompt here. Very simple. It just says a Corvette driving fast down a highway in California. I'm going to go ahead and hit generate. Yep, I'm just going to go ahead and hit generate. But um, one of the reasons I, I put in just such a simple prompt here is because in the Ideogram 3.0 video, if you actually go up here, they actually show that in this video. So when they show the style reference, which I think is up here at the front, uh, they actually show just like a super simple prompt. So they put in an image, put in a super simple prompt, and they get this awesome uh, example. So... That's what I did here. So let's give it just a few minutes here. Okay, there's generation complete. So we didn't tweak like anything else. We literally just uploaded a picture of the Simpsons and this is what we got. So the prompt was a Corvette driving fast down a highway in California. Uh, so you can see some mountains, you can see the palm trees, you see the Corvette. Okay, there's another one right there. There's another one right there. That's pretty cool, I mean, we didn't have to do like anything to get this. Like I literally just put in the most simple prompt uh, and that's what came up. So, I mean, I'm pretty impressed by that. That's pretty awesome. Let's do one more though. Let's go up here to the top. We'll get rid of this. Let's keep the same prompt. So a Corvette driving fast down a highway in California. This time I'm going to, uh, and you can't upload multiple reference there. I'm going to upload the Starry Night uh, painting, one of the most famous, you know, the Van Gogh, one of the most famous paintings. So you got the Starry Night right there. I don't think I need to open that for you to see it. So we'll put in the Starry Night, and we're going to generate the same thing. Let's give it just a minute to, uh, to come up with that image there. But again, going back to the video, if we can find that kind of section right here, I believe it is. So there you go. You see that this is pretty cool. They upload this image of that lady right there, and they just put a man holding a flower, and it comes up with that, which is pretty impressive, right? Uh, pretty cool. So let's see what we got for the Starry Night. Okay, there we go. So we uploaded the Starry Night, came up with these photos, and we just put a Corvette driving fast down the highway. You can definitely see the Starry Night influence. I think that's pretty, pretty legit, pretty cool. So that's kind of the first thing I wanted to do. Um, the next thing I want to do here is I want to put in a realistic mock-up prompt for a t-shirt mock-up and we'll see how it handles that. So really, I'm going to take this, uh, I'm going to take this style reference out of there, but the reason I want to do this is because, you know, there are a lot of different, um, image generators you can use out there for, to generate t-shirt mock-ups that you can use on your website, social media, various places. A lot of them, they still look somewhat AI generated. Sometimes you still, 2025, we still get extra fingers. We still get weird things like that. So I want to test the realism of this, the accuracy, the realism of Ideogram 3.0. See if maybe it comes a little bit closer to uh, 
just being super realistic so that, you know, t-shirt brands, apparel brands, like we don't have to do photo shoots and those kind of things anymore. We can maybe use this completely. So let's take a look at this. So I've got this prompt uh, right here. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna uh, click on style and I'm gonna go realistic. So it says realistic, creates lifelike photography with authentic colors, textures, and lighting. So we're gonna click on that. And let's read the prompt really quickly. So I have high, high quality apparel mock-up featuring a person wearing a black Bella, a blank black Bella canvas 3001 unisex t-shirt. T-shirt should be plain, no designer logo, shown clearly on the front, fitting naturally on the body with realistic fabric folds and texture. Person should be standing in natural light against a neutral or lifestyle background, like a minimal studio or urban setting. Emphasize accurate shirt proportions, a modern retail fit, soft cotton texture, and rolled sleeves or casual styling. The overall look should be clean, professional, and perfect for showcasing t-shirt designs. Let's hit generate on that. We'll give that a second. We could have changed the proportions of that because it's still 16 by 9. But we'll give that a second to generate. Hey, by the way, while we're waiting for that to generate, this video is not sponsored by Ideogram, but I do really love this tool. And if you want to sign up for Ideogram, give it a shot. Uh, you can actually get 100 bonus priority credits by just using my link. So I'll leave a link down in the description. You can go over to shirtschool.com slash Ideogram. You can sign up for an account there. And if you sign up for any of their paid plans, you'll actually get 100 bonus priority credits, meaning you'll get those super fast generations uh, by just using that link. So pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look here what we got. I'll take myself off the screen there. Okay, here's what we got. Okay, so we got Bella Canvas on the shirt. That's not what we're looking for. Definitely not. But I will say this is pretty realistic. But let's play around with this a little bit. So let's actually, so obviously we can see here that it didn't do a good job interpreting blank black Bella Canvas. So let's just take out the Bella Canvas. We'll do blank black unisex t-shirt. And at the end, let's just include, make sure the entire uh, person is included in the image. So we wanna see their face. Uh, we wanna see the rest of kind of everything there. So we'll just hit generate on that. Let's give that just a second there and we'll see uh, kind of what that gives us. Once that's complete, the last thing we're gonna do, so we're gonna take a look at that. The last thing we're gonna do in 3.0 is we are gonna do a t-shirt design with some really complex text. So we're gonna do that and kind of see uh, how that goes. So let's open this up right here. So we've got some weird text there for some reason, but let's take a look at these other ones. Okay, that one's looking pretty good, pretty nice. Okay, that one's got some weird text on it. That one looks pretty nice. So I'd say realism in this regard, it looks pretty good. Um, it's hard to tell without seeing the entire face or, you know, seeing the hands, but I think from a mock-up perspective, like if you, if you're looking for a t-shirt mock-up to use on like an ad or social media, this is actually what you want. You know, what, what I teach in my, this one, especially what I teach inside my program shirt school is that you really want your mock-ups to be facing the camera. You want the, obviously, um, uh, you want the t-shirt design to be kind of the focal point of the image. So you want it to be right up there facing the camera. This does look very realistic and it's it's the uh, the cropping that you would want in a mock-up, right? So I would encourage you to go test this for yourself, definitely. See if you like it, see you know if what you can kind of get out of it. So the last thing we're gonna do here, again, I'm gonna do a t-shirt prompt and I, I'm, I'm kind of putting Ideogram to the test here. I wanna see you know, how good it is. I want you to also be the judge. Let me know, know down in the comments, is this any good? Are you liking this? Are you impressed? I think it's been pretty good so far. The last uh, the last prompt I'm gonna do is pretty detailed. I'm not gonna read through all of this, but I did, wanna, I did wanna do a really detailed prompt, put it to the test. And what we're really testing here is how good is the t-shirt design? Just how good is it in general? but also how good does it interpret the text? Like I'm making it interpret a lot of text. So this is what it says. It's in the books and reading niche. I'm actually gonna remove these little guys here. Books and reading niche featuring multiple layers of hand-drawn vintage inspired stylized typography. So the central phrase is just one more chapter. So that's some text. But then also surrounding it, including smaller decorative text phrases and a mix of retro serif and typewriter fonts so reading is my superpower, lost in a good book, powered by coffee and fiction. These are kind of all around it in the image. And there's a bunch of other stuff here. So super detailed. And it says balance between typograph, typographic hierarchy and illustrative charm. 
So we're gonna click this here and we're actually gonna do design. And this time let's change it from 16 by nine because we probably actually want it to be uh, nine by 16 potentially, maybe 10 by 16. Let's go 10 by 16 there for our t-shirt design. Let's hit generate. Let's see what it does with this. I'm really interested to kind of examine the prompt and see how good does it do with the text? How good of a t-shirt design is it? Is it useful at all? Uh, I'm really interested to see kind of what it does here. So I can start to see the them coming up. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So the first one here, the central theme here, very good. Just one more, uh, just one more chapter. Powered by coffee and fiction. You've got an extra E there. You've got these up here aren't really working, but I, I do love the, the style. I love the central text theme, the additional, uh, the additional elements around. Just didn't quite catch all the text there. Obviously, like I said, we're putting it to the test. Like this is a lot. Reading is my superpower. Looks like that is spelled correctly. Lost in a gook. <laughs> Powered by coffee and fiction. So this one actually got really close. This is very good. The only one that was a little bit off is right there. Let's see what we got on the next one. Just one more chapter. Powered by reading is my... That one didn't work. Let's look at one more. Reading is my superpower. Lost good book. Uh, powered by coffee and fiction. So that one actually got really close there. We had, looks like we just had one of them that was a little bit off. I mean, overall, like I said, this is very impressive. I, I just gave it a very detailed prompt. Now, if we took out some of that text, I think it would do an even better job. So, you know, I think the question is like, is Ideo, Ideogram 3.0 a huge step forward? I'll let you be the judge of that. I think it's really good. It's, I think it's better than 2.0, better than 2A. It's definitely moving in that right direction. It does seem like, you know, 2A just came out like not very long ago. So this is a quick, quick update uh, that they that they have rolled out. I do think the style reference really, really cool. And I think very useful, you know, if you have a style that you really like and you want to create something that's similar, just uploading an image in there into style reference, it couldn't be easier. And it's very useful, I think, uh, for creating unique styles uh, for whatever you're creating. So I definitely think it's a great model. I think it's very useful. I don't think it's maybe that huge of an upgrade above 2.0 and 2A, uh, but I definitely wanna know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this. If you think Ideogram's awesome, if you love Ideogram, if you've never used it, let me know down in the comments and we'll see you soon.